Good morning. Happy Easter and welcome to worship with Fairy Presbyterian Church. I am the pastor here, the Reverend Emily Lagenstein. It is so good to be together today to celebrate our risen Christ. I do have two quick announcements, and while I do those, if you would grab the pew pads down the center aisle and sign in and pass them on down, we would appreciate that. Our police mission team is raising money for their trip through a Blaze and Pizza fundraiser night. Uh, so there's an insert in your bulletin about it. Uh, plan to eat pizza with the family on Monday, April 24th. Um, and some of the proceeds will go towards our police mission trip. Our annual spring rubbish sale is April 28th and 29th. We have started accepting donations uh, and we are looking for helpers to start signing up as well. There's signing sheets in the lobby. Lots going on at the church, lots of details about things in your bulletin, so be sure to check them out. And now, as God's beloved community, let us stand and greet one another this morning. I'm late. Where'd you go? Oh, really? As you find your way back to your seats, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we pause for the ringing of the bell and then listen to a formal enjoyment. I'm 
Would you please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We come to the tomb while it is still dark, expecting to be met by a huge stone, sealing the death of hope. We find the stone has been rolled away and Christ is not there. May we encounter Christ's presence in the garden that first Easter morning and everywhere we go. Let us live in the joy of Easter morning each and every day. Our opening hymn is number 217, Christ the Lord is risen today. Let us join our voices together in song.
You may be seated. The stone rolled away. We come in hope that no matter who we are, no matter where life has taken us, no matter what choices we have made, no matter what sins we have committed, we will find Christ in this place. The empty tomb assures us that nothing we can do is beyond God's power to redeem. Trusting in God's power to forgive, let us confess our sins together. Would you please join me in the unison prayer of confession? Lord, we have not lived as Easter people. We are unsure of your promise and confused about your will. Like Mary, we weep at the tomb, for we do not recognize your presence. Call us by name, risen Lord, that we may know you with confidence. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us courage to confess your Easter victory. Whenever we are distracted by petty conflicts, keep our minds on reconciling love. Whenever we are overwhelmed by the power of evil, reveal to us again your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Forgive us our sin and let our lives be a testimony to your powerful saving love. Amen. God, who raised Jesus from the dead, has not given us over to sin and death. Through Christ's death, we are forgiven. Through Christ's resurrection, we can have new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. As the children come forward for the children's time, let us welcome them by singing Where Children Belong. There we go. Here, let's put this down here. All right, there we go. All right, we've got a full first view. All right, I've got a book this morning, Twas the Morning of Easter. It is written by Glenis Nihilist and illustrated by Elena Selenova, and it is published by Zondervan Kids. And it is going to tell us the story of Easter here in kind of a familiar format. All right, twas the morning of Easter before the sun rose. Two guards on a hillside were just trying to doze. You see, Jesus had died only three days before. A huge stone had been placed to seal the cave door. The disciples were sleeping, but tossed in their beds as visions of danger swirled in their heads. Would they be arrested and led away too? Without Jesus, their leader, what would they do? In her small, quiet home, not too far away, Jesus's friend Mary was planning her day. She would go to the cave with perfume and spice in hopes that her gifts would make Jesus smell nice. The sun through the trees was just starting to peep at the guards on the hill who were now fast asleep. When all of a sudden there came an earthquake and the rocks and the trees all started to shake. Make a loud earthquake for me with your feet. 
All right. The guards jumped in fright, then fell straight to the floor as the stone rolled away and unsealed the door. Then Mary arrived and crept up to the cave. She had to see Jesus. She had to be brave. But the cave was now empty. Let me see some surprised faces. The cave was now empty. He just wasn't there. Mary sat down and wept, and her cries filled the air. Can we hear some weeping filling the air? Mm, Boo-hoo. But suddenly, Mary heard someone behind her. Dear woman, who is it that you hope to find? Mary jumped and turned around, so confused and afraid. Let me see a confused face. Was this man the gardener, and why had he stayed? But the calm in his voice, the words that he said, soon let Mary know she had nothing to dread. Dear Mary, it's me. It's Jesus, your friend. My story's just starting. This wasn't the end. His eyes, how they twinkled. His smile, so bright. Mary knew in a moment. But could she be right? She gasped in surprise. Let me see your surprise face. And cried, Jesus, it's you. You came back to life. Your promise came true. Jesus nodded and said, but there's no time to lose. You must tell the disciples, go, spread the good news. So she jumped to her feet and away Mary went. She had a story to tell, a tale heaven sent. She ran without stopping and called through the door. Disciples, you've never heard this news before. Now Peter, now James, now Thomas, now John, I went to the cave. Jesus' body was gone, but he called me by name. He's alive, it's true. It's a miracle only our great God could do. Then the trees seemed to dance, birds started to sing, all creation joined in to worship the king. He's alive, he's alive, the rocks cried in praise. The whole earth rejoiced on this day of all days. Let me hear you rejoice. Woohoo! Yeah! It's exciting. When later that night, Mary knelt down to pray, she thought about all that had happened that day, and the stars heard her whisper through soft evening light Happy Easter to all and to all a good night. You got it. All right. Thank you for helping me tell the story. We're going to pray real quick. Hang on, guys. All right. Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for the Easter story. Help us to be like Mary and share the good news. Amen. All right, now you guys can go back to your pews. Once we all stood as captive slaves, the bonds of sin and death our chains, but he with blood our freedom bought. It was finished on the cross. It was finished on the cross. The weight of sin, the sting of death, were swallowed up by righteousness and vanquished. 
vanquished by the Son of God. It was finished on the cross. Yes, it was finished on the cross. Now we rejoice in victory. We lift our eyes to Calvary. Before the battle has begun, by Jesus' blood it has been won. Yes, it was finished on the cross. While our hearts have turned from sin, this flesh is waging war within. Though sin remains, our guilt is gone. It was finished on the cross. It was finished on the cross. His gift of grace our heart betrays with urge to merit or repay we need not live to pay the cost it was finished on the cross yes, yes it was finished on the cross now we rejoice in victory, we lift our eyes to Calvary, before the battle has begun, by Jesus' blood it has been won, yes it was finished on the cross, now we The cross, yes, it was finished on the cross. Let us pray. Living God, by your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the new light of this day. Open our lips to tell of the empty tomb. Open our hearts to believe the good news. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. And then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, just tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and, and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him, told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Gardening requires a certain amount of hope. Envisioning a new life in the midst of despair and death. Gardeners like myself toil and trowel and pluck and prune all for a single bloom. The very act of gardening is one of hope. And it's the exact kind of hope that I saw a woman hunting for that first Easter morning. The sun hadn't peaked over the horizon yet, and the greenish haze of the moon offered barely enough light to move about. It was still dark out. I was out in the cemetery gardens starting my work early. I expected to be alone. But then along came Mary Magdalene, I'm not sure why she was awake so early in the morning. It could have been her grief waking her up. Grief does that to you. A day stretches into night, 
and the moon chases the sun into the day again. The normal rhythms of life cannot win against the restlessness of an unsettled mind and a broken heart. You see, days before, Mary's beloved friend and teacher was murdered. And the Sabbath meant burial preparation had to be left unfinished. But as soon as the clock released her, Mary made her way back to the tomb. But when she arrived, the stone had been moved. Jewish custom took seriously the first seven days of grieving. So to strip people from that final act of love would have been a cruelty to fragile mourners. Even Gentile grave robbers would have left the body out of respect. From a distance, I saw Mary take off to find Peter and John, who came to the garden to confirm her fear. The body was missing. And yet, the bed was made. The pieces of cloth they had swaddled him in were perfectly folded there. Undone by the layered grief, the men didn't linger, but they headed on home. First they lose their teacher and friend, and now his body has been desecrated. It was too much for anyone to bear. I wonder if they tried to get Mary to come along with them, to leave this place of death and go back to sleep. The bags under her bloodshot eyes must have given away her exhaustion. But instead, she stays, posted at that last place she saw Jesus, like a soldier, keeping watch. I saw her peer inside the tomb again, and this time, it isn't empty. But she doesn't see who she is looking for. Two people dressed in white sit where Jesus once lay. Why are you crying, they ask. It's a rather heartless question to ask in a cemetery. Heaving through sobs, she tells them what's wrong. They have taken him. And then turning to leave, she nearly bumps into a man with dirt under his fingernails. And he too asks her, why are you crying? And through tear-blurred eyes, she mistakes him for me, the gardener, and begs him to tell her where Jesus' body lies. It was not me, though. It was not another gardener. It was the resurrected Christ. How strange that the resurrected Christ would be mistaken for a gardener. Maybe because where Jesus was crucified was near a garden. A tiny, beautiful detail that reminds us that death is never too far from new life. Maybe Jesus looks like his dad, the first gardener, who tended the Garden of Eden barefoot. Maybe Jesus looks like the new Adam, the head gardener for the new Eden of the new heaven and the new earth. Or maybe it's because he carries the pruning shears of a vine dresser, the careful tender of our souls ready to pluck and plant and uproot and cut back. Maybe he looks ready to cultivate new life, to pull us towards resurrection as his hands are digging in the dirt with the worms. Or maybe this gardener looks like he knows something about hope. Hope that Mary desperately needs. A gardener knows the kind of hope it takes to sow a seed in the ground to cover it with manure, and to bury it in the cold winter while it's surrounded by naked trees. To leave it be, perhaps for months, trusting that with the magic amount of water and air and time, something new will be born from a single seed. A seed doesn't taste very good, 
It doesn't really have any nutritional value. And it really has no purpose until it's planted by a gardener. And yet inside a tiny seed is all the genetic information needed to grow into a complete plant. And under the right conditions, that tiny speck will sprout and root and bud and bloom. And what grows might provide food, shelter, or awe. Sometimes a giant sequoia or a bush weighted with juicy raspberries or a flamboyant peony. But the first step to creating life from this insignificant genetic package you must bury it. A seed reaches its potential only when it is buried. When things look most lost, most dark, most covered, most long gone, most hopeless, that's when the seed is undergoing the most important change. Through its death, it might produce much fruit, and that first burst of life that breaks through the seed coat after it has been buried, did you know that it's called the radical? As a gardener, I know the hope it takes to believe that through the dark and the freezing and the darkness and the crushing weight of the dirt and the waiting, even there, new life can be born. This is the radical moment of new life, bursting forth from seeming death. Gardeners are delighted, yes, but not surprised. We know what can grow out of cold, hard winter ground. And while spring may be predictable to gardeners, resurrection is not. This mistaken for a gardener guy knows something about that, though. Mary doesn't recognize that the gardener is Jesus, not until he calls her by name. Like a gardener who can name every variation of plant that he has put into the ground, lily and tulip and hyacinth and daffodil, this gardener calls Mary by her name. And finally, Mary knows. Rabuni. She exhales the weight of her despair. My dearest teacher, maybe this is what it means to be an Easter person. To see Christ and think gardener, not as a mistaken identity, but as a prophetic one. To see Christ and know this is the one who can bring forth new life even in my life. This is the one who will call me by name. Mary, Emily. This is the one who will tend me and help me to grow and blossom and bloom in my life. Gardener, Rabuni, teacher, savior, friend. Because of that day, I was in the garden early on the first day, while it was still dark. Because of that day, I overheard Mary discover first an empty tomb, and then her risen friend and savior. Because of that day, I know new life can be found in the garden. New life beyond the plants that I tend. I know new life can be found in the garden, even if things seem dark for a time. I know in my heart now that new life is possible. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response can be found on an insert as well as on the screen this morning. In the bulb, there is a flower. Let us stand and join our voices together in song.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, death has been defeated, and we shout, Alleluia. Let all that we do today be a prayer of praise. For many of us, it is an Easter just like the others, with Easter dresses and Sunday best, with the ringing of bells and hymns of joy, with the preparing of meals and gathering around tables. But let this be an Easter like no other. Let us see and hear with resurrection eyes and ears. Let us discern signs of new life in the usual places, a new baby, flowers blooming in springtime, and in unusual places. Who knows where we might find you, God, if we but look. It is daunting to be resurrection people, even as we read and watch the news. News of continued violence, poverty, suffering, and despair. We drink in these stories with our morning coffee day after day and wonder where Easter has gone. One year ago, we celebrated your resurrection, and it seems little has changed in our world since then. Easter seems an idle tale in the wake of lives destroyed by war, children abused, creation spoiled, and endless bickering among our leaders. Close to home, we know loved ones who have felt the sting of death in their families, people who struggle to survive the loss of a job, people entombed by depression or crippling illness. Yes, resurrection eyes are not blind to pain. Resurrection ears are not deaf to cries of suffering. But resurrection people see your goodness that outlasts and overpowers any darkness we can experience or concoct. Easter is the climax of the story, but not the end. You alone can roll away the stone but we are called to run and tell. We have seen the Lord. Come and follow. Believe and live. God, give us courage to be Easter people. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we are nurtured by God, we bloom and grow in our love and desire to serve. And then we're able to share that love with others. One way we do that is through the offering each week. Offerings given today in the blue envelope, which can be found in your pews kind of along the center aisle, um, will go to one great hour of sharing, which combines offerings from Presbyterian churches around the country that are then distributed to programs that alleviate hunger and help with disaster relief. Last year, our church contributed $1,000. And all together, listen to this, Presbyterian churches across the country contributed over $5 million. We come together on Easter Sunday to do something big as a denomination to show Jesus' love who are in the middle of tornadoes, folks who have experienced hurricanes, those who struggle to have enough food to eat. So if you want to be a part of that, put your offering in the blue envelope. Um, if you'd like your offering to stay local and support our mission and ministry here in Fairview, your offering can be placed in the white envelope or just directly in the offering bag. 
Love grows here and is shared with others. Thank you for your generosity in making that possible. Let us pray. Generous God, in light of your extravagant blessings, we offer our gifts in ourselves, imperfect though they may be, and know that you transform what we offer and plant into the produce of love. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 220, He Lives. Let us join our voices together in song.
receive this blessing for you who are being planted by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. Blessed are you who are buried, you who feel stuck in the depths of grief and despair, or who sit in the pit of unknowing, you who are learning to trust the timing of a tender gardener. And blessed are you who are growing, you who burst with new life, fresh creativity, who understand the pain that sometimes comes with stretching and changing, pruning and being cut back. And blessed are you in your season of fruitfulness, you who are learning to abide in the vine and who taste the sweetness of God's loving kindness, the God who is there all along, planting, waiting, watering, pruning, and delighting, the God who pays careful attention to God's garden. And now may the God who loves all of creation, especially the gardens we call our lives, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path we call life, and the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today.